This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi and Don Dubuque. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance, Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative, Pods, moving and storage, solved. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Louisiana Fish Fry Products, and by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Welcome to the Mardi Gras edition of Paradise, Louisiana. Mardi Gras week, whatever you want to call it. How you celebrating Mardi Gras week? Uh, I hope I'm throwing something. Throwing I hope some? I'm throwing a some bait? baits in the water. I got you. Well, That's I'm going to be with the crew of hogs. Uh, again? <laughs> yeah. You get? Right. We did that last We're gonna year. We're going to bring home the bacon. Yeah, it should be fun. Well, it's going to be fun. But, uh, Don, you know, the Mardi Gras, is t a lot of times is the spillway turns on, a lot of places no turn doubt. on. It's that first drop when the mm -hmm. water flow. But we get a lot of rain now. So some of that's changed. You know, I know from week to week, the Chafalai Spillway was hot, and all of a sudden it was nothing. Uh, down in the marsh, it's still hot. We had to find them, though. We had so many boats. I hope that they ain't blaming Paradise, Louisiana, but the landing was full in the middle of the week or Friday on the weekend. It was full, and but there was still fish being caught. So well, I'll bring you that. I went with KD. KD was seven years on CST and other. Kevin Diaz. Kevin Diaz, Chef KD. Captain Chef Kevin now Diaz. Now is Captain KD and his uh -huh. guide service is outdoors KD. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing it on. Uh, we Did you outfish him? Did what now? Did you outfish KD? I outfish, I was on camera. Oh, you, know well, you always got that camera excuse. I wanted to make excuse. A good fisherman would be able to camera, use a camera and a fishing pole. No, no, yeah, yeah, Joe, yeah. Joe Mack told me a long time ago, you can't do both. Uh, he's right. He's you right. can't do both. Do it good anyway. Yeah. But, Some uh, can't do either. But, but KD is great on right. camera. You're right. Great on camera. And he, he picked up the camera a little bit. Yeah. We were with yeah. John Tom play. But we'll talk about more of that later on. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a lot of news Ooh, coming we in. We got some breaking news, and you're not going to be real happy when I tell you about it either, I don't think. And uh, your trip, your, your rabbit hunt got? Got washed out. Yeah, well, yeah. we could have went. But, you know, why go on a grungy day like that? You know, there's yeah, always go, something. Yeah, it goes do. all the way to the 28th. That's when we're going. We're going last day of the season. Well, that's and we're going to try to do a squirrel hunt. I want to get some hunting in before the, you know, the old shoulder's back now. I can work the gun and everything. Yeah. There ain't nothing wrong with your mouth, though. I'm well, telling you God, what, no. I, I got that insured. Is, Without that, I'm done, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, now we ain't got for two more weeks with you, you know, before us. Yeah, you never know. I might, I might come back as a special guest. Huh? Yeah, well, Maybe you you'll invite you, me you as a guest. You're always welcome with me. It's not, <laughs> it's not going to be the same, but uh, wait till you see what we got coming as a guest. Along with KD will be here, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, we're going to have fun for the next couple of weeks, including today. I want to remind you, you're watching us from Superior Bait and Tackle, Segan Lane in Baton Rouge, and this is Paradise, Louisiana. Stay tuned for more Paradise, Louisiana, voted best of Louisiana outdoors three years in a row. In Louisiana, our state parks are the perfect family destination. With nearly 180 miles of trails through park grounds and historic sites, you can endlessly explore nature, try some kayaking or world-class fishing, then find the perfect campsite or settle into a cozy cabin. Louisiana is calling, and she's using her outside voice. Plan your escape today at www.lastateparks.com. Now is the time to join Benny's Unlimited Wash Club. New memberships start at just $9.99 a month. Wash, rinse, and repeat every day. Take advantage of this introductory offer at one of Benny's seven locations. Pods moving in storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem. You can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that sounds... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? 
trust us for local and long distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods, moving and storage solved. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. In our fishing report, you're going to hear a lot more about freshwater fishing, but you're going to see some more about it because you and Kevin Diaz got a real good trip uh, working down there in the Bayou Black area, which yeah. is this time of the year, is, you can't hardly go wrong down there. I, I, I want to set this up because I, I hope I didn't miss nothing on camera because it mm -hmm. was some strange things. When we got there, we looked out, the parking lot was full. Now, we didn't get there at 10.30. We didn't get in the water at 11 o'clock because we had to talk to everybody that was uh, at the landing that was, uh, who, most people was already was gone. Whose fault right. was that? Okay. But KD, well, KD, KD's a pretty personal person himself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people still recognize him. By now on a TV show, but for what all he does in the different things he does in the community. You know, he's been involved with Wish to Fish, the Inter, uh, Emerge Center. He's been oh, MC the MC's all these all tournaments, the tournament, Children's yeah. Hospital. So KD, is as popular as it is, and he, he was talking to a guy, was coming out, pulled his window down, said, how y'all do? He said, man, I don't know who put the word out. He said, but the Bluebird Canal, you had to take a number to go through it. He like said, there's so many. He said, I was here last week, I caught, I caught my limit. Today, I caught five. So, well, you so lucky one you of the Bluebird reports. Canal was one with We had John, and John caught his in, okay. in Orange Grove. We had John Tom play, so that's what we did. We took our time. We got some pictures. We went out there. But the highlight of this thing is we don't call him Chef KD for nothing. I know he's getting ready to be a guide. He's going to have some ideas that he's going to have in a boat, whether you're in Delacroix, uh, Pontchartrain, wherever you go, KD is versed. He's going to be able to go anywhere, salt water, fresh water. he got a grill in his boat. Wait till you see what we did on the water. Well, so, let's see it. Here we are. We had Bob, Bob Bayou Black Marina. And we started off in the, in the Orange Grove area and uh, catching sacale, bass, chinkapin, brim, and redfish on a sacale jig. Here we go. Hey, guys. Gary's been telling me, you tell me they're biting in Bob Black? Well, here we are. We're launching 11 o'clock in the morning. Bob's Bob Black Marina. Stay tuned. We are on Paradise, Louisiana. We worry about the black cloud. Now, there's a strong east wind, high pressure, bluebird day. He was in the bluebird. He said you had to take a ticket, 60 boats. He was there at daylight. He said he managed three sockele between daylight and 10 a.m. So we're not going to feel bad if we don't do good, but we're going to feel real good if we do good. Now, tell me, John. Now, you were just in here this week. Tell me where we're going. We're not going to Bluebird, but where are we going? I was in Orange Grove, caught 27 Tuesday before last. Didn't have one under a pound. But with all this rain, all of that could have changed. We going to the Orange Grove and all start from there. I think he, I think he sort of, he's trying to, he's trying to cross fish real quick though. I don't, we're going to see. With the rain we've been having, a lot of stuff's going to change, you know? Shoot down there in the water. You know, you think it's muddy, but look. Oh, it's perfect color. Yeah. I've fished with you a bunch of times. This is the whole rig right here. Right there, that's the whole rig. And why you got that little weight on the extra? Just because uh, when they take that bait and they come up with it, they feel that pressure, they turn around and go back down with it. I always put something six inches above that, above that jig. A little bit of weight. Little as you can get by with. It don't hurt to help your cast either. Nope. Yep, yeah. especially when the wind's blowing. That's a chink of pen. Look at the side. Hold him up. Yeah. Hold on. Cold. Let me fish some cold. Hold on. Fish some cold. That guy be killing them chink of pen. Yep. Yeah. Catching them on little worms. I'm catching them all on two jigs. Hold him. Turn him right there. Barfish, striper, whatever you want to call it. 
white bass and yellow bass fishing. Bass, Both yellow in a bass. type of family. I got Another it. Another one of John's little specials. Going up pretty that's grim. Yeah, that's regular bluegill. Now, I missed about 25 in a row. I put a smaller hook jig on. I caught my first bite. I think that's the reason. We'll see. Like a catfish to you? No, that's a good tackle. Another that's striper. Another, another, another striper. Another little bar fish. I ain't no little, that's a good one there. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Fry up good. That's a red, that's a red fish. You're good. <laughs> that's a big sackle. Get Kevin over there. Look at the sackle, Kevin. Yeah, there you go. This is a red fish. Look, look. Oh, that's what we have. Look, look, this is strange. You, 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 got, you got to talk about this. Hey. We got, Sackle or what? I'm starting off late, but guess what? I'm catching up quick. Hey, but he's got a redfish. All right. Now, we didn't have sackle, chinkapin, bluegill, bass, and now a redfish. All we need now is a flounder and a speckled trout. Hey, we did that one where you wanted the big, you know, the big trio. <laughs> John went to pick his up to hold it. <laughs> jump. I tell you what, watch, watch where this one's going to jump. Caught a redfish 12 inches long. Second redfish I caught in here on a, on a hair jig. So they in here. Redfish, chickapin, gogola, brim, sakale, they all in this canal right here. Way out, far out, doing nothing. Just throw it out there and let it sit. Yeah. But can I tell you the wind's blowing down this canal? There's a water mix right. Uh oh, uh oh. We letting y'all see him, but we ain't letting this one boat come see this. He'll eat. Definitely eat. He fight. Fight exactly. A good slam. That's a fillet. It's way back the third bend of dead ends. So that means that it's going to stay the cleanest you can imagine. Because what happens this time of year, so much of this water with the canals that are close to the main drag or just one or two bends, the minute you get a big wind or a tide coming up today, these winds pushing the water up probably five or six inches, that water's going to buddy up. I found that this time of year, January, February, when you've got hot and cold fronts, much better off fishing in a canal system that has a few bends. And let me tell you something. If it's a canal that runs north-south, fish it on the north wind. If the canal runs south to the north, you fish it on that south-southeast wind. It's going to be blowing the water out the back. Makes a big difference. Yeah. All right. Wait, huh? See them on camera? They catch them little ones. The triple ripple catches everything. With this, I lost my crappy psyche. Bit bitty. See how big? KD? See KD on camera? Look. All right. Get that in the water. KD. Look at it. Oh. World famous. Woo! Put stuff in the boat. Oh, come don't, here, baby. Don't fall. Don't come fall, here, KD. Baby. Don't fall. Man, yeah, no. Look at the belly. You are watching Paradise, Louisiana. <laughs> if this ain't a paradise, <laughs> I don't you're know watching. what you're looking for. You're, you're watching. You watch the Chef KD. And look, I told him I ain't grabbed that bait all day. I picked that bait up. I said, Gary, get ready. I'm going to catch you one, get you a pretty picture. Oh, yeah. You know, as I'm pushing later on in life, people always want to go fishing. And they also want to learn. And I fish sockle bass, redfish specks, you know, inshore and offshore. More specks. I'm not blue water. So I went in and got my captain's license. In fact, myself and my best friend, Gene Hoover, we both got a license. And what we're doing is we're chartering. And, uh, you know, we make it more of just uh, 
get in the boat and go fish. We want to teach. We want the experience of, you know, learning a little bit more than just going in one spot and fishing. We want you to learn why we're doing what we're doing. Mainly I'm fishing out of Delacro. We'll go to Hopedale if the wind's so bad we can't fish in Delacro. Summertime we'll hit Black Bay, but right now you don't need to go anywhere but with, you know, five miles of the landing if you know what you're doing. And uh, if you could smell this, <laughs> you'd be on board. So look, chefkd.com is all you got to do. Find out about us. Uh, my cell phone's on there. Give me a call. We'll explain what we do and the prices. I want to be fair to you. I want to make an experience so you and your family, you and your buddies can come out there, catch fish, and enjoy the outdoors. Meow, meow. Oop. I'm going to let the cat out the bag, guys. I'm going to be joining Gary, kind of share a little bit of what we do, and I'm hoping I can teach him how to cook. I don't have to teach him how to eat. Now, everybody knows that, okay? I got those pulled pork sandwiches almost ready on the boat, but we're going to share some amazing times with Louisiana, faith, family, and fishing, and fun. That's what Louisiana's all about. I'm just honored to get a chance to spend a little more time with Gary because, you know, we're always in different boats. Used to have my own show. Hey, guys, I can't wait to get this old guy out there and uh, we get ready to make the black cloud disappear. We'll see you out there. That's good. How you say that in French? Time to go on, say c'est bon. How you say it? You did. How you say it? bon. Yeah. In Italian, in Italian you say, ah, damn that good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. I made up for leaving my snack. Okay, Brett, safety and car insurance. Never scored a safety. That's defense. But go on, please. Uh, yeah, defensive. That, that's exactly how you should drive. Well, there's no such thing as a defensive drive. Offense makes the drive. Oh, I, I mean when you're on the road. But it doesn't matter, home or away. Okay, clearly I'm striking out here. Um... That's baseball. Get great auto rates from Farm Bureau Insurance. Call your agent today. For the thirsty, for those who hang out in packs, for heroes, for sidekicks, for those who see the glass half empty, for those who see it half full, for those on the right, for those on the left, for those with nicknames, for those with curves, for people that cycle, for people that recycle, for BFFs, for frenemies, for those with style, for lovers, for families, for big families, for everyone. Pause moving in storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem. You can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that sounds... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? Help. Trust us for local and long-distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods. Moving in storage. Solved. Welcome to the H&H &H Tournament and Events Calendar. And, Gary, it's February. We're starting to get them now. Bass tournaments, but we've got a couple of shooting events yeah, to talk well, about. Well, and we had one that canceled. We had one that last minute, the Calcasieu qualified, state qualified for a high school bass tournament. Hoover and them had to make a call. That line was coming, mm -hmm. and they could see it. It was at 3 o'clock in the morning. It was right there on them. It was a Toledo Bend from Toledo Bend, Sabine. Some of those kids were thinking about not only fishing Calcasieu, but they were fishing about fishing the Sabine River. You know, it's really hard to cancel because people got hotel rooms, but they said a prayer on it. Mm -hmm. They made a call. They canceled it. They reset it for April the 7th. They made that call. And when the good thing they did, because there was lightning and thunder and even a tornado watch in Calcasieu. So if you want to know, that's be coming back up April the 7th. They rescheduled it. Uh, they got... A bunch of tournaments coming up right now. The, the, the one I'm always talking about, the March 3rd, that's at Cabela. The weigh-in is there. They're going to be fishing out of dry runs. That's the Emerge Center. For the Emerge Center, the artistic tournament, it's going to be a field day. It's going to be a cook-off. They're going to be live music. They're going to be everything going on in the, the parking lot at Cabela's. And don't forget that. And then the following week, I think it's March 10th, the St. James Boat Club, Trinity Outdoors, had moved there from Cabela's. They're going to be at the St. James Boat Club. And, uh, and while we, and, uh, 
We got another event coming up. The Zoro Baptist has their annual wildlife supper. They're going to be frying fish. Uh, KD was going to be there, but William Spook Spawn, the TV personality mm -hmm. of Spook Nation, he's going to be there with talking. Uh, they're going to have some other people there. KD was there. KD was scheduled to be a talker, but Spook had, had already made a commitment. But KD will be there probably with our camera. So, so we'll be there on that event. And then uh, we got the Wild Game Supper coming up on the 22nd and down in La Rose. We're there every year. Uh, with, uh, them Hall of Famers, the big game mm -hmm. Hall of Famers will be there. So uh, And April 4th, we got another wild game, the Beast Feast. Oh, the Rummel yeah. Beast Feast, April 4th at uh, Rummel High School on Severn Avenue in Metro. Oh, well, you got a good morning for that one. That Who's going to bring that report from? I guess I'm going to have to go this year, huh? You ought to go. I'm going to go this year. You invite me every year. You, you don't show up? But I'm going to show up. But I'll, 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 I'll be there. Uh, Don, and then. Uh, Gunning for a cure. That's I certainly am sorry I'm going to miss that. We had a good time out there last year. Right. Which one? Gunning for a Cure. Oh, Gunning for a Cure. That's Stella Plantation. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's where we're going. I'll be there, and that's on the 24th. I also, before, we get, before I get out of this, before you get with the serious news, I want to <laughs> congratulate the Turlins Catholic Fishing Team. Now, they had their classic, and they raised the money every year. We helped promote it, and they sent us a, a thank you, but... Uh, I want to congratulate them. They donated $5,000 to the Miles Perrette Cancer Center. Congratulations. Here's a team picture. And there's a bunch of them. Y'all did a great job. And not only putting young people on the water, keeping them out of trouble, they're raising money for cancer research also. So, All right, very good. Uh, Don, you got serious news. Well, let's tell them about the slot limit change, too. You know, we got another one of our right. lakes that has removed the slot limit. Really, they're finding out more and more of these trophy and quality lakes, which were established way back in the 90s to produce better bass, is simply not working. And when they find out it doesn't work, they go back and just take the slots off and they go back to the regular limit. We got another one that was That's announced. That's some of the good things that the wildlife fish is doing and getting smart and what they're doing. But <laughs> Took uh, them a while. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's still, it's just some good yeah, things that's a good coming move. out that's of That's a good move. Right now, and uh, I know the people that are living on Cana Lake, I believe they're going to like the idea. I've I talked so, to a couple too. people. Uh, you know, I still have not fished Cana Lake yet? No. Not yet. I've never been there. I want yeah. to go there and catch those big tinker pins. Yeah. They got some brim over there. Well, you, been run, yeah. you missed out pounds. on the new lake syndrome. You know, when those lakes are first formed, right. they, they go off the charts as far as the size of the bass. And then it kind of goes back down and levels well, out if you look and at never the, comes back if you like look the at original. The Toledo Bend was the same way. Well, you look at the top ten. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and see when they were the caught. big bass. Right, right. Yeah, they, a lot of them come from Caney Lake. Mm -hmm. Plus, they had a grass problem, I think, think solved that problem, too. That was a serious problem. Okay. Been through a lot with them. All right. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you probably not going to make you happy. Well, maybe it'll make some of you happy. What I'm holding here in my hands right now is called the Price of Paradise. And what this is, uh, it's not available for public knowledge. Uh, I happen to come across this from an unidentified source. This is basically a suggestion list for how to fund the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. And this has been a problem for many, many years in Louisiana, as a lot of you probably know. We do not receive any state funds, or very few, to promote our State Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. In other states, it's not the same way. They get funding. Uh, you can argue whether it should be that way or not. I mean, my argument is if you, if you drink the water, you breathe the air, you eat the seafood, even if you don't hunt or fish actively, you benefit from the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. And even if you don't drink water or breathe air, Guess what? You benefit from a state that brings in economic one, from their resources. I want to clarify one question. The funds for this come from fees and licenses. Right. Well, right. it also comes from oil producing properties, but that's kind of fallen off by the wayside. Basically, the department is getting strapped for funding. Are we doing more yeah. and more for fishermen? There have hunters? been dedicated funds that have been transferred, like on reefs and I stuff. I was getting to that, yeah. But uh, it don't get there. Well, since 2009, there's about $65 million of statutory dedicated funds for Department of Wildlife and Fisheries that I say was stolen by the state and put into the general fund. It doesn't work the other way around. We can't go into the Roads and Bridges Fund and say, we want to do duck research. We're taking your money and do that. That's the fault of governors that have made those moves in the past. What this is all about is to try to overcome some of those problems of funding for Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. And who are they going to go to first? If you look at this, they're going to be pretty much across the board increases in your hunting and fishing license fees. 
Some of these I agree with. We have not had license fee increases in some licenses for over 20 years. And to keep up with inflation and keep up with other states, it probably warrants it. But they're going to reduce the number of licenses drastically from like 117 licenses down to about 26, which means you're not going to have those specialty licenses anymore. So you're going to be paying for things at a higher price that you may not be interested in doing. Maybe you're not a particularly a turkey hunter. Like you're the not cable a vision hunter. bill. Well, yeah, that's, that's kind of like that. that. That's it. You, they're forcing you to get 113 stations you don't want. To you, give you you one get the, one package or another package. One of the most glaring examples is in the lifetime license, which the cheapest lifetime license you can get, which means you don't buy another license for the rest of your life if you're between zero and four years of age is only $200. And it's graduated up to about $500 for an adult that wants to buy it. All the lifetime licenses, if this is passed, go to $1,000 regardless of age. That's one example. There's going to be kids licenses. They're going to be putting licenses on people and increasing fees on seniors, people that have never felt that before. Um, some of that is warranted. Some of it, again, is not. One thing I do not like in this package of suggestions, and that's all it is at this point, legislators have seen it. They're looking at it. They're going to be asked to vote on it and pass it from the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. You, the public, at some point will get a chance to look at it Form an opinion on it and make your opinion heard whether you support some of it, all of it, or none of it. What I don't like is the timing on it. I think this should be available to the public now so that they can be prepared instead of giving a very narrow window of time to contact the legislator and, and go in opposition to this. Other things I don't like about it, the amount of the money. Uh, it was raised from $60 million to $80 million during the BP spill. We needed $20 million more to do more extensive research and data to make sure our seafood was safe. Well, guess what? We're not doing that anymore. But the budget's still at $80 million. Why isn't the budget cut back since we're not doing as much research? Another thing, there's not one single commercial license on here that's being proposed as an increase. Yet they state in here that the commercial fisheries are extremely valuable and they need to be better funded. Guess who they're asking to raise the money to fund it? Hunters and fishermen, sportsmen to fund commercial operations. I don't think that's fair. And there's some other things, too, I've got in here. I'm going to be discussing this at length on our Hunt Fish Talk radio program this Saturday morning from 8 to 9. And you can listen to it online at DonTheOutdoorsGuy.com on my website. And you'll hear a full discussion. We're going to get into more of these. Uh, Gary, if you want to make this available to viewers, I've got a copy of it. I'm not supposed to have it. If they want to get it and they contact you, are you willing to send them this so that they can look at it? Well, it's in that or they can contact your website and see what you want to do. But, but let me say this. In the history of Paradise, Louisiana, we've always availed ourselves to wildlife and fisheries. The people came on, they sent people, they sent people when they changed the rules mm -hmm. on deer hunting. Anything they did, we've had them on here, discuss it, to give them. We're going to offer you an invitation to the wildlife and fisheries right now. If you want to come on, they'll send your people. And well, you want to defend right. any of these or give your idea on this, just like Don gave his idea. My idea is, I like it broad. I like the sunshine to sign on it before it's ever done. It can be nobody say, well, they they run a, around the end here. They run a little reverse mm -hmm. on us and change some things that they shouldn't been, you know, that's been the same thing a long time. Just because it's been there a long time don't mean it's right. Mm -hmm. But I want what's best for the hunter and fisherman. That's what my show is all about. And uh, I, I want what's fair with the commercial fishermen. So if you agree with me and you want more information on this, you email me and tell me, and then we'll make it available. Also, this is a call out right now to wildlife and fisheries. The legislator, any of the legislators out there that are hunting fish, if you want to know more about this or you hadn't got enough information yet, you probably already got, uh, just contact me, Gary Paradise, Louisiana, or mm -hmm. Don at the Outdoor. Well, two more important points God, about this. One, right. you're talking about we're reaching out to Wildlife and Fisheries, inviting this as a venue to come discuss this. Right. They should have already contacted us in the newspapers and all the media and put this out already so that people would have time. It's to, time to, to test uh, out. Absolutely. The other thing is consumer price index tying the license prices to that. What that means is if the consumer price index goes up a certain level, the license fee increase will automatically happen. They will not have to draft up one of these and go back and sell it to the legislators or the public. It will automatically go up unless it's more than 50% of the increase in the license. 
then it would go back to the legislature. I'm not real happy about that. Maybe some people are, but that's what this is, a democracy. And if you want to get involved in it, take a look at this thing, form an opinion quickly, and then let your legislator and your Wildlife and Fisheries Commissioners know how you feel about it. Well, one more thing right now. Uh, and on another sad note, we lost a, a legend, Al, Al Carver, a wildlife and fisheries agent for years and years. Also, he was a partner with his brother, Glenn. Now, mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to, hold on, I forgot the name of the place. Mr. Twister. Mr. Well, Twister they also had over, yeah. Toledo Tackle, or was it start over. some tackle store up yeah, in Toledo? Yeah, Toledo. Toledo. Yeah, Toledo. Yeah, his nephew running now. Mm -hmm. but, and... Also, another sad note, and I uh, give a little praise to Mr. Al Carver. He's a wildlife and fisheries agent up there in the north part of the state. He was also the brother of Glenn Carver, the one that started to lead the tackle, and uh, Mr. Twister. Mm -hmm. uh, Glenn he served well as a known. commissioner. He passed away. Uh, his, his, little, his obituary was in the paper up there, and he mm -hmm. is, uh, Mr. Chapman sent me that reminder, and and to tell about it, and I got to read it. It's so many things that he was involved in. Uh, I'm sure there's things that name up after him right now. But Mr. Glenn still, he been holding on, he been a little sick, but he's still up there to lead the tackle on Saturday mornings or something. During the, during the week, he's in there eating breakfast at that big store to lead the tackle and to lead the bend. So uh, say, say, say farewell again to Al Carver. Man always had a smile on his face. Good guy to work with. Nice man. Stay tuned for more Paradise, Louisiana. Voted best of Louisiana outdoors three years in a row. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. Now is the time to join Benny's Unlimited Wash Club. New memberships start at just $9.99 a month. Wash, rinse, and repeat every day. Take advantage of this introductory offer at one of Benny's seven locations. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. TV. Uh, today we're fishing on the side of the road as you can see. Um, we've had some really really cold weather the last four or five days and um, water super super low um, and these fish they they have to leave their ponds um, and they all congregate in these these deep canals and um, pick the right days you can really stack up. So here in South Louisiana we got tons and tons of options for uh, bankside fishing for y'all those without a boat um, you got the Grand Isle area you got Fouchon you got Leeville uh, Golden Meadow <clears throat> when it gets really really cold and then fish congregate in Hopedale I mean you can catch fish every cast until your arms fall off um, you got Myrtle Grove where you can catch fish off the side of the road I think there's a little fee they charge but that's good fishing um, there's just numerous numerous spots um, 
here in Louisiana, you know, for, for those anglers without boats. Um, today we caught on redfish, we caught them on a matrix shad. They, they like the shrimp creole today um, on a small jig head, uh, quarter ounce, five sixteenths ounce, um, and then we caught some on a Carolina rig. So, you know, next time we get this really, really cold weather where you can't feel your fingertips, you might want to go try and catch some redfish because chances are they're going to be stacked up and um, you'll catch some fish. It's perfect time to bring the kids if you want to get the kids on some action. Um, and, you know, you take a kid fishing, you know, they might end up being hooked for life. So get out there and get some fish. used today was a Carolina rig. It's a one ounce bank sinker. Slides through your line of choice. I use Power Pro. And then we have a barrel swivel. Um, one end has the Power Pro. The other end has your leader line. Um, it's about two and a half foot. And then we have your matrix shad. And right now I'm using a J hook, but you can use a jig head. Um, you can find all this stuff on matrix shad's website and you can order it online and probably have it in a couple days. Um, anytime you're bank fishing, you want to look for a moving water and a perfect place to do that are these culverts all alongside the highways. You got them in Golden Meadow, you got them in Leeville, you got them in Grand Isle, you got them in Fouchon. And all it basically is is pipes or openings under a ground connecting two bodies of water. You got a body of water over here and then you got a body of water over here. And these pipes, it pushes the current and the bait under the road and fish sit on the other side waiting to get an easy meal. So always stop and try to fish these culverts because you might win a boat in a star tournament like I did. All right guys, so we made it back to the house. Um, we started off our uh, morning, about mid-morning in Port Sulphur. Uh, caught some fish there. Um, but as a die-hard fisherman, I wanted to see what else was out there. So we took the ferry and ended up in uh, St. Bernard Parish where we, uh, we caught fish there too. So sometimes as a bank fisherman, you gotta move around um, because your, your options are somewhat limited. Um, but you know, as a diehard, you do what you gotta do to catch fish and um, we did that today. So thank you for tuning in. In Louisiana, our state parks are the perfect family destination. With nearly 180 miles of trails through park grounds and historic sites, you can endlessly explore nature, try some kayaking or world-class fishing, then find the perfect campsite or settle into a cozy cabin. Louisiana is calling, and she's using her outside voice. Plan your escape today at www.lastateparks.com. Okay, Brett, safety and car insurance. Never scored a safety. That's defense. But go on, please. Uh, yeah, defensive. That, that's exactly how you should drive. Well, there's no such thing as a defensive drive. Offense makes the drive. Oh, I, I mean when you're on the road. But it doesn't matter, home or away. <sighs> okay, clearly I'm striking out here. Um... That's baseball. Get great auto rates from Farm Bureau Insurance. Call your agent today. Welcome to the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report. And before we start to give you the fishing information, where to find them and how to catch them, I want to introduce you to my replacement. We'll be starting here in a couple of weeks on Paradise, Louisiana, Ms. Lindsay Anderson. And Lindsay, if you would, tell the viewers who you are, what you're all about, and what they're going to be seeing when you show on the show. Sure. Hi, I'm Lindsay Anderson. Um, I'm actually from Mandeville, New Orleans area. I grew up in both. And I didn't really grow up in a big outdoor family. It's just something that's naturally in my blood and I love it. Grew up horseback riding, um, got into hunting, fishing, and if I could do that every single day of my life, I would. <laughs> well, coming from Mandeville where I live, uh, you gotta be a great person. So we're looking forward <laughs> to seeing some reports. Yeah, what's your favorite outdoor activity? It just, it depends. You know, um, I really loved deer hunting. That was probably um, where it all started for me, but I love fishing too. So either one, either one's good. You yeah, know? your husband, Mike Anderson, uh, when y'all got to get in the argument, he's also raised in the outdoors. <laughs> His daughter already, she's killing that big deer and she's in all the things. You're going to be on a rabbit hunt with us later this week. Yep. But if y'all got a Y'all got a little argument. You don't want to go fishing, hunting, or 
What was your favorite fishing? Well, first, I have to say, we don't argue. Yeah, he kind so. of assumed that you argued. I was saying, well, how does he know that? <laughs> but, no, if we had to decide whether we're going to go fishing, hunting, um, I would probably say we're going to go fishing. That's We love to do that. We're Orange Beach, Bouchon, um, Atchafalaya Basin, whatever, it, wherever we can go, that's where we want to go. It's called a discussion, Gary. It's not an argument. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. This is a relationship. No, what she was saying is, well, she, she gets her way. That's what I was uh, saying. Whatever it is, there ain't no yeah, argument. Well, well, maybe this so. is where we're going. Can you blame? That's why no. it pays to be on the same page. Uh -huh. See? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, good deal. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to you being there and you and your husband, Mike, and by the way, y'all been in a lot of business. She's a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Works so for Dudley DuBois. Oh, better yeah. Behave. Well, you know, but, and Mike, he's, you, you seen him last week. He, mm -hmm. He's a well-built young man. Uh, stays in the outdoors. He's a busy guy. He's always running. He's running a business, plus he finds time, just like you and everybody else. They always can find time for outdoors, and that's what I admire mostly about him. And, and then we always talk for years with women in outdoors. You got Martha Spencer right now, superstar in outdoors coming up right now. It's going to be on your, your show, Bayou Wild. Uh, now we we just too fortunate people to have somebody step in that like the outdoors and believe it or not, they're nice to look at too. Well, Lindsay, you're going to be able to keep him. In, you'll be able to keep him in line. I he's he's so. just a big teddy bear. His bark is a whole lot worse than his bite. Well, let's let's get with us. Let's talk we, about some fish. The hunting and fishing report. The hunting report is down. You know, all I can tell you is we got all the seasons going on right now. The only ones that be going on is the the uh, squirrel, rabbit. The squirrel, the rabbits, and and the nutra. Conservation saw, order for geese. Conservation order just started, and then you're gonna have. Uh, the, the geese season went sour before we could really kill the last of the speckle again, belly. Huh? The black cloud. Oh, again. man. Look, Jay, Th Jay Thomas had an invitation set up. Yeah. He went Saturday. Here's the one picture I got. Jay and his group killed him. Uh, called him Monday to remind him. He was hunting, and he called me back. He said, they weren't there. They didn't mm -hmm. come. They went in in the fields around us. Uh, your husband, Mike, had one set up, too, and he's mm -hmm. got a conservation order maybe set up because they're not in the fields. They're not nowhere. So I don't know what's going on. I didn't talk to the people up in North Louisiana uh, or Central Louisiana with Blake Swallow and, uh, and then Top Gun. I hadn't talked to them. So they all got conservation orders and you can call them and try them. And they, they will tell you whether they got geese in the area or not. So you know, Gary, sometimes we take for granted people know what we're talking about. We've mentioned conservation order a number of times. There's people out there that don't know what that is. We need to explain what a conservation order hunt is. Go ahead and explain to them. Explain to them. You help me. We're going to explain to you. It's what, well, at, at one time, okay, and maybe still, the geese were so overpopulated, they mm -hmm. were eating people. The, the nature and grounds, where they, were, where they were hatched, they were eating them out of house and home, and they were going to come a blight, they were going to cause trouble. So they came with a conservation order. They so hard to hunt and they leery that they made it legal to hunt with a recording device, which mm -hmm. the, if people ever did, you can bring them in sometime the sound of the thousand geese and they put a, flags out, whatever you do to attract them, it became legal. And Everything you can also but take feed them. The plug Everything out but of your feed gun. them. Everything. You can't feed them. No. You can't put them out because it attracts other animals. But they take the plug out your gun. Mm -hmm. uh, you can hunt them even a half hour later. Right. So there's a lot of things I might have left out, but that was the idea was is to, to make it more easier to control the population. And the latest, if you check on it, the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service tells you it is making some progress. They're kind of reducing the numbers in them, but it's still an overpopulation situation. But it has worked to a certain extent. But, you know, once you start relaxing regulations, the geese react to that and then they become even harder to hunt. So. Oh yeah, yeah sure enough. We, use, we, we oh, did we a know. bunch of we conservation know. hunts in the last few years. And uh, Well, what we're talking about some of these guides offer conservation hunts. If you don't have uh, 10 dozen decoys, you don't have the property to go do it, you don't have a big recorder with big speakers set up, uh, they can take you out there and, and you got a real good chance hunting with some of these guys. They do good conservation. Yeah. Don, uh, 
It actually says it's a lot. And it runs all the way to March 13th, 14th. It'll be oh, some until warm day, leave. and it'll be hot. Some of them won't all be fun, mm -hmm. but I'm sure you can cancel it anytime you want. Let's go to fishing report. Lindsay, you got a fishing report? What, you, anybody, any of your friends caught fish? Just tell me. Is there yeah or no? Uh, we haven't gone fishing in a while. Um, we've been mainly trying to get some geese. We have a, a duck lease, geese lease, if you will. Uh, out in the Port Barry area, and at the second split is when they normally come in, and it's really been off and on. So that's where all my time's been. I haven't had time. That's to fish a smart yet. thing to do. You take advantage of what's open at that time. You can fish 12 months a year. You yep. can't hunt geese 12 months a year. Well, the the shortest report I got is is saltwater. I I don't have that many reports. Mm -hmm. I got one report this week. It came from uh, our good friend the Thomas Bedrain sent me a a picture. Some monsters. He's still catching off of Highway One. He said, "Side of the road, report and catch them on top water." Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, and that's the only report I got. I know they're catching fish off the side well, of the road. Well, I had right good now. reports from the Shell Beach area. Yeah. You know, uh, Mr. Go, Long Rocks. Uh, they were catching some trout out there when the water warmed up. The water got up to over 60 degrees, and the trout turned on. That's probably dropped off a little bit now. Uh, you got to have the good tide range. You got to look for clean water. The basic things. And also uh, redfish, sheephead drum, that's all been good fishing out there too. Poncha train, I'm not getting any good reports from there. The, the wall over by the, you know, the Mr. Go over by the wall where it comes in by below Violet, there's been some fish caught there. But I tell you, the freshwater is really dominated. You got a lot of saltwater guys not even going saltwater fishing. They're going freshwater fishing because it's in and it's hot. Yeah, well, well the mix area. So I'm getting reports from uh, Craig the Greek mm -hmm. and, and Mark Barker and them. They were over there fishing. Hens catching bass. Mm -hmm. They're catching bass in the feet. They said that yep. water warmed up. They're in there. They're in the grass. They're spawning. They're catching big fish. They turn them around. If you see what KD and I was catching, and some of those fish, he, when he was catching those bass, he was full of eggs. They were big. We would release them right away, keeping the smaller fish. But even the smaller fish, I noticed when I was mm -hmm. cleaning them, the sacolay too, are full of eggs right now. So, you know, they're getting ready to spawn in the water. Like you said, the water, we started out at 56 degrees. It was mm -hmm. 65 degrees mm -hmm. everywhere we were during the middle of the day. So I'm sure that water, if you're fishing the rocks in the salt water, if you're fishing around Poncho Train, around the piers, when that sun starts coming out, it's going to warm up. So, uh, And then uh, Tofield, you're talking about the bass. Uh, Tofield sent me a nice picture of some bass. He's, you know, Tofield doesn't leave anything to, to, to the imagination. He goes after it when it's in. He and uh, Ginger have been going out and catching bass every day. It's been good there. Uh, also got a good report from my friend Toby Cooper out of Delacro. He caught some mules over there over the weekend. So bass fishing is still good there, and you're going to mix in with reds as always in that area. Yeah, you know, but this is a time of year, too. The weather's been bad. The wind's been bad. But toe feeling them still, you know, you want your once-in-a-lifetime trip, you can start booking that fly-in trip. You know, they're still going over there. When the weather starts leveling off, He'll be flying every day over there. And he Mostly might bull somebody. reds is what you're going to find. Right now, Big but the trout yeah. will be in another 30 days. You should find right trout but, out there. But too. them bull reds, he's catching That's them on now, top. Right. He's watching. So. Uh, offshore? You heard anything on offshore? No, nothing. Well, Martha's nothing. been fishing uh, with John Cole out there on Southern Catch Outfitters. And, I mean, they fished, and she described the weather as slop last week. And if you looked on the radar, I know when I was on the radio, I looked to see, and it was a mess. There were greens and reds and oranges and purples. They went out in it and managed to catch a bunch of blackfin tuna and some wahoo in the 65 pound range and they had a hookup on a beautiful 500 pound mako but didn't last long he broke off what you got by way on salt water what you yeah, got yeah uh take a look at that we got the orange in the yellow four horsemen popping corks what's the, which one is the now listen the best to them color. close and you tell me which sound you like better do you like the orange sound or the yellow sound <laughs> the, the orange now sound? do that one for him Lindsay. Yeah, which, that, which one you like that better that remind me of a friend of mine fishing off the bank catching sackle and I asked him which one was the most popular cork. He had the orange cork, <laughs> uh -huh. he had the short truth cork, and the white cork. He said, I caught most of them on the short truth. Yeah. So. See, I'm waiting for the pink one. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would fit you well, pink one. I don't know what kind of sound that makes. It's probably, let's <laughs> uh, see. But anyway, the, the idea of this is the sound. You're hearing it. It's a good, loud popping sound. It's the sound of a shrimp popping a bait, bait species. And it's got a really good, I like this, this, this solid uh, wire. It won't bend on you very easily. And you can adjust the length of your, your bait. You can fish it with live bait on a, on a regular kale hook or a treble hook. 
or you can fish it with a jig head either way. Um, this is Aaron Pierce, it's four horsemen carks. Aaron and Roger Dowdy, they're down there in Cutoff and they're the ones that makes this local guys making local baits for local fishermen. Uh, and I'm gonna present this to you, Gary. It's orange, oh, it goes good with your black. Lindsay, you can keep the short I always one. take freebies. And as soon as we get a pink, we'll get that. I'll take it too. I, I take all kind of freebies because I give a lot of freebies away. <laughs> Donna, we're gonna go to fresh water right now. You know, the biggest word out right now is is the Bayou Black area. Mm -hmm. Orange Grove, the uh, Bluebird Canal. I'd say it's out right now because it, it, it must have looked like uh, uh, they had a Mardi Gras parade down there this mm -hmm. past Friday. And you uh, can imagine what the weekend was. But there's still so many bodies of water. And if you're looking for that clear water, you don't want to find the black water. If you find the clear water when the tide is moving, KD and them, they fish there all the time. Uh, John Temple, they're looking for trees out in the water or points or runouts coming out of the marsh. And they're getting off of them coming, sometimes they're fishing in the middle. Now, we talked to Gary Krause coming here Can today. you believe him, though? Gary Krause, can you believe the reports he gives you? Yeah, I do. They're pretty do, reliable. But he's cocky. Yeah, I think Especially so. when he catches fish. Well, he, he lets you know that. Yeah, right. He won't tell you. You don't hear the bad reports. He, won't go, he ain't going to tell you where he caught him in the exact <laughs> spot. But, uh, but, but he's got to show it off. He's going to take pictures, too. He, he was filming a show out here. But uh, they were fishing in the Lake Verretti area. And uh, they, some of them strips are coming in right now. They're averaging 20 pounds. Five mm. fish string are over 20 that's, pounds. That's good fish. You know, that's a four pound average. They have some beautiful fish. He, t he showed me a picture. Then he showed me one when he put the camera down, he caught one. He, he's quick to put that camera down. He had one about six, eight. They were catching them on a swim jig. I'm gonna see if I got some here. Look at here. They got, they got all these uh, swim jigs and all these uh, delta lures. Look, see, he put them out over there. He's going to buy them, huh? You see, he's doing them. Look, there you go. See, that's some of the baits. He's catching them on. He's putting them over there. You can get them over here at uh, Superior, Superior Bait and tackle. tackle. Now, also, <laughs> the spillway is changing. Now, we had a guy come up. He was killing the Sacolay and the Pigeon area. They all they did in canals back in Cowan, catfish, they were catching I heard the same story. I was ready to go myself. And then all of a sudden the water came up, the things to change in the rain. They they quit catching. I noticed cycling. a pattern of that with you, huh? The what now? It's kind of a pattern with that with you. I, I don't know. The, the geese away. left, the yeah. fish quit, the water got dirty. <laughs> you you, you saw the video <laughs> with Katie. <laughs> You know, you saw the video with KD. I catch KD fish. Counteract if I put maybe, the camera maybe down, maybe I catch you. fish. Okay. I don't even need them sometimes. I just okay. like having that. No, I know you're a great. You fisherman. know when you're <laughs> you're a great American. You've been spoiled <laughs> all your life too. You go with I all am, the I'm best cattle. You're right. I am. Yeah. How many times have you went out on your own and caught fish? More times than you. <laughs> no, y'all don't know. Oh, yes. You're not old as me. You can't be. I started young. <laughs> Think about that. Tell me, be honest. Now you've been some great captains. All your life. You, you, Why should that ever change? You, you yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want it to change. I'm trying to emulate you. Tell me how, how that works. You know, we go with them good captains. And, uh, there's been some great trips I made. Yeah, and, I and now that I got Lindsay, I'm pretty sure between her and Mike, I can find some people that take us fishing. If you want to go with Lindsay on the boat and I'll shoot camera, just let me know. So we're going to catch some fish. You ready, Lindsay? I'm in. I said, you in. That's Tell what I like to hear. No, the other report, like you said, Lafitte. Yeah. That's a freshwater report. You got the same thing from mm -hmm. Tofield. Uh, they, what they're telling me, said, man, these people right now, said, these fish are ready to spawn. Yeah, there's some of them are spawning, and then are, you'll get a second spawn, too, in April. But right now, they're in that grass. They're going to the bank. Gary Krause said the same thing. He said, the sun is shining. Okay, and it starts warming up, them fish will start moving toward the bank. But if not, if it's overcast and cool, they're right off the drop off right now. So you can run crankbait. I noticed KD was running a, a jerk bait mm -hmm. and he was getting hits early. He was good when he started fishing, he started bringing that jerk bait in, and they get off about 20 foot off the bank. That's when he was getting a hit. Then later on, it was got warmer in the afternoon after he made me those pool boys. We was going, look, after he cooked that pork on that grill, he would go up and he was catching those fish on that rope. It was catching mm -hmm. right up against the bank. So that, that's that report. Toledo Bend, another place right now. 
15 foot down and then the sackle are starting to move up too. And they're catching fish. There's a lot of eggs in those fish. They're catching sackle. Here's a picture of some bass from little Noah Vincent and Cole Hargrave that they caught it. I got a big fish from a guy that sends us all the time, sending the fish. We got the, the big rodeo coming up City Park Lake. Mm -hmm. uh, City Park Lake, big bass rodeo. Then he goes, Lord Carter. He caught this fish and he asked me, he said, I, I didn't have my scale with what you think is way over seven, full of eggs, and he released it. Congratulations to you. Thanks for sending the picture, Lloyd. So uh, that's it. You can tell them pictures, they're full of row. Uh, by the way, that other big fish, his boy's name was Charlie, I can't even pronounce it. It says, it looks like Montele. You see that name right there, Don? Come on. You expect me. me to read your handwriting? <laughs> Come on. Montele? I have no idea. Thank you, Charles. Keep, keep Charles. Let's keep it at Charles. Keep, keep we'll coming right. in. All right. And that's it. That's all okay. I got right now. All right. Send your pictures in. Gary at Paradise, Louisiana. Using a cell phone. We beg you, please, take your picture horizontally, not vertically. Fits a whole lot better on the screen, right? That's it. All right. See you all again next week. Right. You'll be here? I'll be here. Good. You'll be here? I hope to. You hope to. <laughs> I'll be here, I too. Hope to. We'll hope you're here, too. Check us out. Paradise, Louisiana. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance, Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative, Pods, moving and storage, solved, Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Louisiana Fish Fry Products, and by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament.